just poke holes and say, Steve is so off base, you know, right? Okay. So basically, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, he went through that. He started the school in 1949. Um, John Corlett, born in 1911, learns about Switzerland as a way to overcome his teenage tuberculosis. Because they send them there. Yeah. And so at his boarding school, mm -hmm. they remember the kid long enough so that in 1950, when he needs his first student, someone in um, England says, one of our old boys has started a school in Switzerland, and I think you would fit better there. And this is how Chris Reynolds got introduced. So there's a tradition in old schools of the master staying there long enough and knowing all the alumni. And you can go back to an old British school and find your old teacher. And he will remember you, or he will remember a situation and say, you know, that about 20 years ago, a kid went through here and he eventually started a school in Switzerland. You know, maybe you could go there. And there, there's a sense that there's always a school that's right for the student. And there isn't this proprietary nature. I mean, I'm not saying that all schools in England have this wonderful fellowship. No, there's rivalries and, you know, they shoot down each other. But I just found it very interesting. There's you don't find that. There's you don't a, find that in public schools There's here. a lineage. Okay. In Reiki, you have a lineage. Oh, all right. Jeremiah is, Jeremiah is working within a lineage. And so these, so basically it's important to be able oh, to... Oh, yeah. If you want to know Will lineage. Sutherland, you want to know where his, the ideas are coming from. Oh. This school would not exist but for John Corlett. That's why he would asked not me. know. Oh, did he ask? Because he asked me about life dynamics. And he said, "Who? like, what's this philosophy? And I'm going to write him back and say, something I created. Seriously? It's something I created. Oh, yeah, it, it, oh interesting, because I thought it referred to some sort of philosophy out there. No, because but, because the guy who I work who, the guy who I'm working with, Jim, mm -hmm, right. he has this idea of things he wants to do. It's it's life skills, it's with, life skills. which has been upgraded. But he calls it life dynamics. Which I think is much better than life skills. Because Absolutely. life skills seems like such a dead thing. It's like badges. Oh good. I've got the politeness badge. Now I'll be, always be polite in all situations. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? You don't even know the first thing about being polite. You know, it, it, it's something you're always learning. You can't get a badge in life skills, but you, you just happen to it's learn awesome. rudiments. Mm -hmm. Right. And, they, and that's why it's dynamic. dynamic. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. You know, so, so this, is his, this is his words. It's not mine. You know, but you're putting it into action. You're getting it into a book. You're getting it onto YouTube. That's what the YouTube channel is used for. Once you, if you just, and this is how you build, um, you got to have your team. And so this is something I can do for you, or at least get other people. You can take this idea and run with it. You, you use a camera to capture conversations. Those conversations that could be public, go public. Someone out there does the transcription. The transcription eventually turns into a book, blogs, posts. Um, once you have something in a book, you know about just in time publishing. No, but I, I, I know the, I'm the idea is you only it, it, as long as the book is on the table, people have the perception that there are thousands of these books in existence, and they better read what's inside those covers. And it, in fact, it was printed off of a CD, and there's only three copies. <laughs> but because it's in a book, suddenly that information is more valuable than being on a blog. So um, John Corlett gave a speech in 1973 where he lays out his philosophy. Right. And it's comprehensive. Mind, body. Who does he give the speech to? Uh, the students. And every um, uh, parent gets a copy of the speech. My mother holds on to this copy. She mails it to me. And the school is in crisis because he dies in 1977. 25 years later, it's lost its way. Mm -hmm. It no longer has a ranking system, which is a way of feeding back to students. This is what we feel about you. You're, you know, you were a standard bearer, but now because of your behavior, you've been dropped to a red badge. Oh, so everybody terrible. was just, it's sort of like modern education where everybody gets a passing grade. 
No, 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 no. Oh. Um, a, a, you, you got a badge no, for I'm your character. I'm saying now. Oh, now? Yeah. Um, there was, they said, oh, it's too arbitrary. There was so much time spent evaluating students because you had to look at, the, I, I was a house captain for a year. I spent evaluating 50 of my peers. And it, it, there's a psychological thing that goes on. It's like, at some point, you have to ask yourself, why am I judging my peer? But somebody that's has it, to. Somebody has to, exactly. And what Corlett came up with was, he said, if you can think of a better way of communicating to people the importance of character, let me know. Until then, to. we've got this these terminable, interminable meetings. They took three hours on a Sunday. And we're, we're like... Isn't it, it's, it's sunny outside, the skiing is beautiful, and we house captains are inside on this dumb meeting deciding, well, does he get his promotion or not? And if he got promoted, that got and more who pocket was, and money. Who, uh, sorry, who, 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 was the, who was the... And did this guy run the meetings? This um, Corbett guy? Yeah. Um, that, the, in, originally, he would set the tone for it. Eventually, you know, he, they he's no longer there. They ran themselves. And so but he, they were just kind of like grueling. Um, well, it's, it's that sort of nitpicky. I mean, students themselves began to see, you know, I really blew it on, you know, George. He really is a good guy. I should have spoken up for him, but I didn't. Or um, let's let him go through all those dynamics that um, it, it was like a simulation game. And it, for me, that was... The, I. Being in the soup, I didn't realize how valuable that was to go through that. Not having the rank system has caused the school to become like any other school. It was a distinguisher. Um, just to go back a little bit on the background, um, Kurt Hahn had this concept that you, you, everyone could go through a program and improve. When Corlett saw that up at Gordonston, he came up with the new ideas and he went to Switzerland. He said, I'm going to open my own school and I'm going to do it in the place where I had wonderful health, which was in Switzerland. And his concept was, um, we're going to have a standard program for improvement, but we're going to look at each individual and see maybe something special. We're going to have a flexible enough program so that not, yeah, everybody has to go out on a weekend, but, they don't necessarily all have to do a, a grueling uniform route. Some of them might just want to go down three miles and, and you know, no, stay in a tent. He's right. Whereas He's other right. ones, you know, so he had more flexibility in his program. Um, for a little bit background, I mean, uh, I'm assuming where you're going, eventually you'll have time to just listen to some audio or to read. Yeah. Because we got documents on this guy. But his big thing was meditation. And he introduced meditation. It's more like a thought for the day, but he called it meditation to catch people's attention. You started the day with um, three minutes of silence. The guy got up on the stage, and then he tells a story. It's like dropping a pebble in a still lake. You can't start the story immediately. You have to be quiet first. You wait for the audience to stop and shuffling he tells around. A story. Could be a staff member, usually a staff member, but you know, eventually, as a teenager, you want to get up there and do the, 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 the and it, we get a story. One of our history professors told us about the Stanley Milgram experiment. Bam! I never forgot that story. I mean, I, I never learned it in history or in psychology, but I learned it in this thought of the day. So let me ask you. Yeah. So this is a place. 